Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News Update. And after a two-year hiatus, one of Spain's biggest festivals, San Fermín, is back and kicks off today. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel by buying merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, one of Spain's biggest festivals, the San Fermín Festival, aka the Running of the Bulls Festival, is back and kicks off today. And as we can see here, the first post-pandemic San Fermín is people want to party, they say. Welcome to the best fiestas in the world. This is the message that those arriving in Pamplona will find these days. The city council has placed this slogan on billboards, leaflets, fiesta programs, and even tablecloths in the hotel and catering trade. It has also installed photo calls at the airport and at train and bus stations, inviting travelers to immortalize and share their arrival in Pamplona. This is the campaign with which it wants to welcome the first post-pandemic San Fermines, which, in terms of numbers, promised to be very similar to those before COVID. People want to party. Pamplona locals keep repeating this statement over and over again these days. So there we go, the first San Fermín festival since the pandemic. As we know, it was cancelled back in 2020 and in 2021, back again this year. And as we saw there, people want to party. And according to the Pamplona Town Hall, they are the best fiestas not only in Spain, but in the whole world. Now, COVID is unfortunately making headlines again as case numbers are rising around the country. And as we can read here, Spain close to a red light situation again with 1,135.30 positive cases per 100,000 inhabitants, twice as many as in June. The seventh wave of coronavirus is increasing the numbers of positive cases every week. On the verge of an eighth wave with the Omicron subvariants BA4 and BA5, which have caused the increase in infections in recent weeks, as shown by data from the Ministry of Health. An uncertain outlook where the sublineages of the virus behave differently from the Omicron variant, and which has led experts to consider renaming COVID-19 as COVID-22. Spain has once again recorded the highest figures of the entire seventh wave, with the highest number of coronavirus positives and the highest number of hospitalizations. So there we go, COVID cases again on the rise here in Spain, and experts don't want to call it COVID-19 anymore, but COVID-22. And as I mentioned in yesterday's live stream, health experts are again calling for a mask mandate. So we'll see how this one plays out in coming days and weeks. Now, the coalition government here in Spain is again facing an internal crisis as the PSOE side of the government has increased defence spending without informing its coalition partner Podemos, and they're not happy. And as we can see here, Diaz calls for urgent meeting of coalition coalition pact after government clash over defence spending. Unidas Podemos has called for the urgent convening of the coalition government's monitoring committee following the latest clashes with the PSOE on defence matters. It was the second vice president and minister of employment, Yolanda Diaz, who made this announcement on the same day that the Council of Ministers approved an additional credit of 1 billion euros for defence, something that the Purple Party rejects. Diaz has criticised the fact that she and her party have found out about this fund through the press, something that the government has denied. So another squabble among coalition partners, the PSOE party and Unidas Podemos, and I reckon it's about time for elections, don't you? Because this government appears to be completely exhausted. Now high inflation is starting to take its toll on the average Spanish household. And as we can see from this headline, poorer households and richer companies. Inflation leaves an unfair footprint paid for by those who have the least. Inflation caused by the coronavirus pandemic and the war in Ukraine has reduced the purchasing power of the poorest households by 30% more than that of the richest, while corporate profits have soared. In addition, the population at risk of poverty or social exclusion rose to 27.8% in the first year of the pandemic 2020, the highest figure in five years, according to Oxfam Intermon's Living Conditions Survey. In a report published on Wednesday under the title Inequality Does Not Go on Holiday, the NGO denounces that the latest economic challenges facing families are leaving an unequal and unfair footprint in which the poorest households are losing more than the richest. 
So as usual, the poor getting poorer while the rich are getting richer. A lot of households struggling to pay bills while corporate profits are soaring. Now former Spanish King Juan Carlos is back in the press today and apparently Spanish company Telefonica lent its private jets to the King Emeritus for his personal trips. Telefonica was one of the companies that lent its corporate resources so that Juan Carlos I could move around the world on personal trips when he abdicated as King of Spain. This is stated in the documentation in the hands of the Anti-Corruption Prosecutor's Office and the Ministry of Finance after the tax agency demanded information on the gifts received by large companies once he left office in 2014 following the scandals about his private life. According to sources close to the case, the King Emeritus used some of the four private planes that Telefonica had until 2019 to travel outside Spain thanks to his good relationship with Fesa Alierta, president of the telecommunications group from the summer of 2000 until April 2016. So there we go, starting to become clear how the royal family has operated in this country for some years. And the former king taking advantage of having friends in high places to get access to those private jets. Now, if you're living in Spain, like cycling, and have tried to buy a new bicycle recently, you will know that it is not an easy thing to do. And according to this headline, there's a year's wait for a bicycle. Surge in demand coincides with supply shortages. Ramon Medina, 68 years old and has been working with bicycles since he was 14. It's crazy, says the owner of Medina Bicicletas in Barcelona. Before the 2008 crisis, many were also bought, but now it's different. It's much more. The bicycle momentum is driving Medina's business, but not as much as he would like. The global supply crisis is weighing down the market. There is a shortage of frames, sprockets, and above all batteries, among other components. There's a stock problem. There are not enough bikes, he says. So there we go, a bicycle shortage to add to the list of problems and bad news for people that want to get their hands on a new bike. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Vimal, please make more walking videos. We enjoy the surroundings you walk us through. Yeah, Vimal, thanks for the comment and it's definitely something that I'm going to do more of in the future. Walking videos, where I take a walk around the different neighborhoods, not only here, but other places that I travel to. And now that I'm using a GoPro as my main vlogging camera, recording when I'm out and about is easier than ever. So stay tuned for more walk around videos and I'll try to put out two or three a week. On here from me, Zoy, I'm traveling to Spain this summer from Saudi Arabia. Just want to know if there are any restrictions or rules for COVID. Yeah, me, Zoy, thanks for the comment. And I'm not sure what the rules are for entering Spain from countries like Saudi Arabia when it comes to restrictions and the like. But I'm sure you'll be able to find that information on a Spanish government website. When it comes to current COVID rules and regulations on the ground here in Spain, you're in luck because there aren't many. In fact, the only one that I can think of is that you have to wear a face mask if you take public transport here in Spain, or if you go into a pharmacy or any other type of health center. However, as we saw earlier in today's video, COVID numbers are again on the rise and health experts are calling for a stricter mask mandate. So things could change in coming weeks or months, but the government hasn't said anything official yet. And whether they will do or not is anybody's guess. So enjoy your trip to Spain. One here from Trevor, question. So do we avoid Spain and go to Turkey where it is much cheaper and local thugs do not beat up tourists? Same in Morocco, safer and nicer than Spain. Portugal may have the drought, but much friendlier. So no health service, therefore dangerous. Yeah, Trevor, thanks for the comment, but unfortunately it's one of the most incoherent comments that I've seen in recent times. In fact, I can't understand what you're trying to say at all. Are you saying that Spain has a problem with thugs that beat up tourists and that same problem doesn't exist in Turkey? Is that what you're trying to say? Are you saying that Morocco is also a thug-free country? When you say that Portuguese people are friendlier than the Spanish, I think that's a fairly subjective remark because in my experience, there's not much difference between the two. You find friendly and unfriendly people in both countries in my opinion. And the last part of your comment about the health service in capitals, I have no idea what you're talking about. But thanks anyway for the comment, even though I couldn't understand it. One here from John Stew. I had the same problem trying to speak to my doctor in Ireland, and I downloaded a free auto redial app. It dialed 154 times before I got through. Haven't told anyone in Ireland about it. Enjoy the channel a lot. Yeah, John, thanks for the comment and glad that you enjoy the channel. We had this chat during yesterday's live stream. Somebody said that they're having a lot of trouble trying to get appointments with public services here in Spain. And it is a fact that quite often you call public services here 
and nobody picks up the phone. But as you mentioned in your comment, it happens in Ireland too. So the problem is not unique to Spain. And thanks for sharing the information about the auto redial app. I might have to get one. One here from Scott. Hi Stu, I avoided Ryanair and EasyJet when I flew from Malaga to the UK on Sunday, only to find my Wizz Air flight had been cancelled. They gave me back my 90 euros, which went towards a 345 euro flight two hours after my original. It is not my normal persona to be negative, but it seems that throughout the pandemic and post, companies rip us off at any opportunity. What happened to us humans sticking together in a time of crisis? Anyway, Keep up the good work. Yes, Scott, thanks for the comment and sorry to see that you had problems with your return flight to the UK getting cancelled and you had to fork out more cash in order to get home. But unfortunately, as we have seen, it is a sign of the times, not only here in Spain, but in many countries around the world. And you're right, it does seem that the average consumer is getting ripped off left, right and centre currently. And why are we having trouble sticking together during times of crisis and working together to overcome the problems that we currently have? To be honest, I don't know the exact answer, but I blame politicians that are constantly trying to divide us. And until that stops, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And finally, one here from Ed McF1. Singapore has solved its graffiti problems. The answer, sore bottoms. Yeah, thanks for the comment and obviously referring to the fact that Singapore resorts to corporal punishment to put an end to problems like graffiti. And no doubt asking the question, why don't we do the same? I remember when I was a boy at school down there in Australia, corporal punishment was still quite common back then. Disobedience at school was punished with a cane. I think we used to call it getting the cuts and you'd put your hand out and a teacher would slap it with a big stick. But nowadays that punishment no longer exists in schools in Australia. So should we follow Singapore's lead and bring back corporal punishment for crimes like graffiti? I don't know. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in that comment section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.